So we've always been incredibly close to the few people who resonated on the same wavelength as us. Um, for years, I was traveling the world and thanks to our retail partners, meeting collectors and, and engaging with them. And there was a very, very small group of people who actually liked MBNF. Now, over the last three to four years, the brand has taken such a dimension, not through us, through suddenly 10 times more customers interested in, in getting an MBNF. Um, and it's true that I've started losing touch and that's made me sad because we're on the tribe now, I think we're at a close to 1,100. There's no way I know 1,100 people. I probably know 400, 500. And, and I'm getting older, so my memory is going. But um, so we're trying to be way more active between us, the, the team and the tribe. Um, you're going to see, of course, there was the mad one, which was reserved for the, the tribe. You're going to see creations I've worked on, which are not watches, which we're creating only for the tribe. Uh, there's the gathering concepts. There is There are mini gatherings when I travel around the world. Um, I think, and that's very important, when people will remember the brand when I'm away, I've gone, um, by the products. But for me, it's the journey. It's, it's sitting down with all these people with whom I've created, with whom I've interacted, with whom I've been clients, and sharing about our lives, sharing about what we have understood, and share their experiences. That's a great moment for me. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go much more into that. That's the, that's the next part of my life. Uh, it's, it's a complete game changer. Um, you have to imagine that in the last two, three years, um, we had retailers who had just a showcase with MBNF and that showcase was most of the times, if not always, completely empty. So there was no experience defect. And, um, and so here you come into our little world. Um, thankfully, the Hourglass has invested and has kept one of each of the super hot products which are on the waiting list that you can actually try on. There is no other place for the moment in the world except for Geneva where you can have that. So at some point we needed larger spaces. I went to visit umpteen plateaus with had no character at all. I felt completely depressed. And one day I fell upon this old 1907 house, which sort of makes me think of the Adams family house. And I was like, that, that's, that's what I want. And it took, um, it took the better part of a year and a half, practically two years. To, um, to do all the works and get it ready. And we finally entered a year ago, but we entered it was bare and then we populated it with all the little things which makes our MBNF life. And finally we opened the doors for visits. Now, I don't think I'd ever thought that a space could have such an impact on the team. Because for me, you put me anywhere you put them anywhere on, on, in, in a train station or on a bench and I'm working and suddenly you enter into a house which has so much character which has so much beauty which is honestly more beautiful than my flat <laughs> it's it's so from I, I suppose that for most people it's more beautiful to work there than in their home and uh, and the atmosphere just went like that people who visit tell me that the energy which which pumps through that place just when you see people running up and down because we tell everybody, don't email, don't call, just go and see everybody else. So you have people go up and down and right and center and um, it's alive. The, the HM11 is, uh, I think it's a, an incredibly important piece for MBNF. It's our 21st caliber. I think it's important, first of all, because we're going back to our fundamentals of what MBNF stands for, kinetic sculptures, 3D kinetic sculptures, which give time. It's also because we're 18 years old, the brand is 18 years old, there's some sort of a coming of age, and it's the first, second time, actually, that a piece is not inspired from my childhood. 
It's something I started getting passionate about, which is architecture, and actually more importantly, late 60s, early 70s architecture. Some architects are like the rock and roll guys of architecture, come out with completely different ways of seeing architecture, which is not as practical, but more whimsical, more crazy, more, I'm gonna say more beautiful, because I'm, I am that sort of person. And um, I started going into this and seeing how these people created bubbles and things look like spaceships or look organic. And I was like, wow, they're a bit like us, that crazy rat pack of watchmaking in the early 2000s, which created what we call today contemporary watchmaking. Um, those were the guys. So I started going into that and I thought, well, I would like to create a watch, which is a tribute to those guys. And that piece is a house. So you have a house on your, on your, on your wrist with a central foyer, which gives onto four rooms and each room, there's something happening. Horologically, it's incredibly complex. The case, like 92 components, I think there are, it, 19 water resistance gaskets. And on top of that, of course, the whole function and the fact that it can turn. And at the end of the day, that whole idea of, you know what, why don't we just wind it up by turning the case? And that's, when I saw that piece, um, and that's always the thing when you create watches, when you create anything, you work for five years. The first sketch is 2018. And then finally, five years later, you get the piece in your hand, the first prototype completely assembled with the finishing you wanted. Now it's really beautiful. And, and there, is, there is nothing which comes to that sensation, that feeling, except when you have your first child or your child in your hand, it's the same thing. <laughs> That's a really good question. So this whole revisiting pieces 10 years after was absolutely nothing I'd planned. Now, I just remind everybody that when I created MBNF, I only had HM1 in mind, and that's the only design I had, which was crazy. So going forward, suddenly you realize that you're coming to the 10th anniversary and you think, ah, oh, I would like to tweak it, do it differently with everything I've become, evolved, thought, understood. And it's brought another way of creating that I haven't ever expected, which for me, creating was about pushing boundaries, breaking the mold. It was about not doing what had already been done. And suddenly now I'm reworking on my older creations and it, it makes me, uh, it actually makes me happy. And it's interesting because there are a few pieces I've tried working on and I can't because I think I can't do better than what I did. I'm thinking of HM6. So um, next year is the 10th anniversary of HM6, 2024, 2014. I don't think I could do anything better on HM6 than what exists, at least not now. Maybe in 10 years, for the 20th anniversary, I'll come up with a new idea. But that also makes me happy because when you look back and say, I should have done, there's a little bit of, ah, oh, you didn't do it as well as you could. But when you look back at a piece you did 10 years ago and you go, you know, honestly, I can't do better than that. If I look at my HM11 architect and I look at my HM1, look at the adventure, the journey, the creative journey, which has gone through in these 18 years. And you look at, well, if, if I was capable of doing HM11 as my first piece, where would I be today? I would be something completely different. So MBNF is, is as interesting for me as a creative adventure, as a human adventure of seeing what human being I've become. It's interesting, uh, I was having a dinner with old friends a few days ago who've known me for 30 years but hadn't seen me in a long time. And they looked at me and they said, um, you've mellowed, you're, you're different. And I saw that as a great compliment. I was so intense. I was so, it was so about my story, my journey, what I needed to do in my life before I passed away. Whereas now I am way more laid back. 
and I'm enjoying, it's the first time I'm actually enjoying the story. I've always been proud of what we did, but there was no, happiness was not an option. Now I'm proud and I'm happy.